a new ranked season has just started, so as always, I want to provide some builds for every single role for you to climb back to master as easy as possible. Also, the season is a bit different. Mewtwo and Zashin will be completely banned from being part in ranked, so of course, they will also not be featured in this video. Gonna start with Attacker Pokemon, of course, Dragapult, still a great choice. Currently, probably the highest win rate attacker once Mewtwo Y is gone as well. Of course, Mewtwo Y currently is the best. Dragapult right behind it when it comes to solo queue or ranked in general. Phantom Force and Shadow Boy, you can also play with Drang Breath as well. Also totally fine. And we're going to run a Muscle Band with Scope Lens. And for the third item, you can either go for Rapid Scarf or also for Charging Charm. Both are totally fine. Charm gives you a bit more late game damage, while Rapid Fire Scarfs gives you a bit more early game damage. And then, of course, we go for six brown and six white emblems, either focusing on crit a bit or not. It doesn't really matter at all. Next up, we have Cramorant, one of the most underrated Pokemon in the entire game. Dive and Air Slash is absolutely excellent of a build that I can 100% recommend playing. It can be either played in Central or on Bot or Top Path. And then we combine it with a Spoon, Energy Amplifier, and a Body Barrier, and seven black and six green emblems. Glaceon is still also an excellent choice. Isaac is being Ice Shot, which is always do a lot of damage. And it's also very easy to play. can also either be played in Central or in Path, as you can always adjust quite easily. And personally, I run Mustard Band on this Pokemon. You don't have to. You can also just run another special attack item with a choice backs and, of course, Spoon. We always want to have Spoon. So if you don't want to run Mustard Band, you can also run Energy Amplifier or Vice Glasses. And, of course, we also run 7 Black and 6 Green Emblems. But we can put some more Crit Emblems in, like Scyther. And there's also another one. I think it's Pinsir that both have Crit Rate as Green ones. You can put those in as, you know... Glaceon does crit on basic attacks. Sylveon is back in the meta, already played a lot in tournaments as well, and it's 100% a Pokemon I can recommend again. Hyper Voice and Car Mind is also very, very strong in solo queue. Mystic Fire is also okay, but Mystic Fire has a hard time actually carrying games properly. Hyper Voice is very good. Laning Phase, you want to mostly play it in top or bot path, and you can pressure your opponents a lot after level 4. We combine this with either Vice Glasses, Choice Bags, and Spoon, or Vice Choice Glasses and the Curse item. Both are totally fine. Spoon is always a bit weird on this Pokemon because it already reduces a special attack by a lot, so you don't really have to run it because Hyper Voice already does it up to a 80% of special defense. So, But it still helps for the first like two or three waves to do a bit more damage, but you can also just run the Curse item. And if you feel very risky, you can also run Special Specs, of course, as well. And then we either run seven black and six green emblems for more cooldown reduction, or we go for a six green full special attack page. You already know that I had to include Chandelure into this uh, video, as it's currently one of my favorite Pokemon to play. I had the highest win rate of all of my Pokemon in the last season with it as well. I had an 80% win rate in almost 40 games of playing Chandelure. Flamethrower Pointer, guys, is an amazing build. I can only recommend playing it. It's also super, super fun. It can also be played either in Central Area or in Path. Both is totally fine. And we're going to play Choice Specs, Vice Glasses, and also Spoon. You can also replace Vice Glasses for the Curse item. Curse items can always work in some Vice Glasses on a lot of these Pokemon. And then for Emblems, I also go for a... You can either go for Cooler Reduction, 7 Black and 6 Green, or again, also for a full special attack page. But I think cool reduction with Poltergeist is quite nice. Also, just in case you miss your flamethrower, right? The Black Emblems will help you to get your next flamethrower back up a tiny bit faster. Venusaur has multiple builds you can play. You can either go for Solar Beam Giga Drain, Solar Beam Sludge Bomb, or Pellet Dance Giga Drain. All of those are excellent. Of course, they're going to run different items, but you can play all of them and have a lot of success. Very, very strong as well. So they can be played either in Central Area, for Paladins, but Beam can be played both in Bot Path and also in Central Area. Has a lot of damage, has a lot of security, you can one-shot enemy Pokemon in team fights very, very easily as well, and it's just very, very fun to play. For Solar Beam Giga Drain, we mainly just run Choice Specs, Spoon, and Energy Amplifier to make, you know, our moves do as much damage as possible in our Unite move as well, because Venus Unite does a crazy amount of damage, and then we also combine it with a 7 Black and 6 Green Emblems. If you go for Paladins, I would recommend you play Resonant Guard with a Spoon and rapid fire scarf but you can you can mix around you can also play muscle band there's a lot of different ways you can play it just make sure that when you go for it you also play six white and six green emblems and then for solar beam we play jack button and for better pedal dance we go for a full heal next up scardevoir also back in the meta can also be played in center area or top and bot path pretty much any move combination works you can play moonblast psyshock you can play psychic psyshock you can play psychic future side even moonblast future side even though it's the least favorite one i have all of them work quite quite well with a spoon a choice and vice glasses and gardevoir is very good now can just spam you night move which is very good in solo queue allows you to team fight for pretty much every objective and just get a lot of work done. And then, of course, seven black and six green emblems. 
And for our last attack on this list, we have Inteleon. Still the best attacker Pokemon when it comes to bot path. It has so much last setting. It's very, very easy to get a huge level lead to go for all the last sets as well in lane. And it also says very strong team fighting with its Unite move. Snipe shot deals incredible damage. Just make sure you don't play um, Liquidation anymore. Liquidation is very, very bad now. Do not play it. And then we play Choice, Wise, and also Spoon, of course, with a seven black and six green emblems. Next up, our Rounder builds. Metagross, even though got nerfed, is still one of the best Pokemon in the entire game. And right now, you can pretty much play every single move combination without Gyro Ball always feeling like the better choice. So Meteor Mesh is also very strong, especially if the enemies are a bit more squishy. Meteor Mesh and Headbutt can reach onto the back line and just straight up one-shot enemy squishies, while Gyro Ball against more tankier teams can still sustain because the shield didn't really change at all. It's still very, very strong. I play either Full Heal or X-Speed, with Razor Claw, Weakness Policy, and Attack Weight. And these items pretty much work on every single move combination as well, so I can always adjust my moveset depending on what the enemy team has. And then, of course, we also go for six brown and six white emblems. Buswell is an absolutely painful Pokemon to deal with and still one of the best Pokemon when it comes to our rounder. Superpower Smackdown is the only build you should be playing. And then for head items, you can either play, or I would I always play as Attack Weight, Muscle Band, and Floatstone, but you can also run Weakness Policy instead of the Floatstone. I just like it a lot. It allows me to roam in solo queue a lot, run around, catch up to people, and then use my abilities on them. You don't have to play Floatstone. You can also, again, just play Weakness Policy. Both are totally fine. And Muscle Band, Attack Weight, I just like. I feel like those are kind of must-have. And then, of course, six brown and six white emblems. Mimikyu is also still an absolutely excellent ranked Pokemon I can recommend playing, but mainly in Sanctuary only. I'm not really a big fan of Path Mimikyu, unless you get level 5 very fast. Shadow Claw, Shadow Sneak is for sure the preferred moveset right now. Play Rough is a bit worse, I would feel like, and Shadow Claw just allows you to pump out much more damage in fights. I personally go for Razor Claw, Charging Shaman, and Attack Fight right now. Thus, just needs a lot of damage with Full Heal as well, because Shadow Claw can actually get interrupted, and stuns are the only thing that really are an issue for Mimikyu, and then of course six brown and six white emblems. Dragon Knight is one of those very underestimated Pokemon that I think I feel like should see more play. It's very, very strong in center area with a Dragon Dance and Hyper Beam. In this game, I think I played Muscle Band, Scope Lens, and Charging Charm. You can also play Razor Clover, Charging Charm, but those are very strong. And then we either go for six brown, six white crit emblems, or just for the normal six brown, six white emblem page. And for the last rounder for today's video, I can still 100% recommend Azumarill as well. Very strong, Elaine Bully after getting level 4, Aqua Tail will make you so, so strong so early on. And you can be very self-sufficient, which is very important in solo queue as well, to be just strong on your own and get a lot of work done. So we're going to play Tech Weight with... You can, you can pretty much play whatever you want to see a third item, but mainly Weakness Policy and then also a scope lens, but this weakness policy can also be actually Drain Crown, it can be Muscle Band, it can be even Resonant Guard, all of those are totally fine, also as a third item, and then of course six brown and six white emblems. Time for the Speedstar builds, and there's currently one Speedstar is dominating the game, even in tournaments, which is pretty much either picked or banned in every single game, and that's Leafeon. With the addition of Charging Charm, it has become even stronger, and kind of made up for the nerfs that Leafeon got a while ago. The Solar Blade just does so much damage on level 4, and you can really just dominate games and take over so early, and just run away with the game. We play Attack Weight and Energy Amplifiers are the other two items, and of course 6 brown and 6 white emblems. Even though Dodri got nerfed, it's an absolutely excellent Pokemon. You can also play a lot of different movesets. I think tri attack and Agility is also still very strong. And Belly got nerfed because the Night Move got a small nerf. Drill Pack Jump Kick is also totally fine still. And the Charging Charm item, of course, is also excellent on Dodrio, combined with Attack Weight and a Razor Claw. You can also play Jump Kick tri attack but it's probably one of the hardest builds in the entire game to play. So you have to have a lot of practice of it to really get it going. But Dodrio, if you enjoy playing it, it's still very strong. And of course, six brown and six white emblems. A lot of people have very different opinions about Muscaradas, what the best build is, but I feel like you can play almost anything. I do think Double Team and Flower Trick is the most consistent build on Muscarada that always gets the job done, as it's, you know, very decisive and also adds the extra stun of a Double Team. And I think you can get a lot of work done with it. Also very nice with the Flower Trick reset. And I think Double Team in general just brings a bit of more chaos to the game. Trailblaze is kind of obvious, you just have to jump to the enemy team, which often you cannot even do. But it doesn't matter what, if you like Night Session Trailblaze, it can also be played. In this build, I'm playing Attack Weight, Charging Charm, and Razor Claw. If you go for Night Slash, I would probably recommend a Scope Lens and also maybe some Crit Emblems on top of it. Not really linear though, as Night Slash already gives a lot of Crit Rate. Otherwise, of course, 6 Brown and 6 White Emblems.
And for the last speed star, we obviously can't forget about Zorak with Faint Attack and Shadow Claw. It's an absolutely excellent build that just can carry solo queue games very, very hard. And we're going to play with Charging Charm with Attack Rate and also a Weakness Policy, trying to increase our attack damage as much as we can. And then, of course, six brown and six white emblems. This one takes a bit more skill, but I mean, general speedsters take a bit more skill to play. I think by far the easiest is, of course, what is it? Um, I guess Leafeon, right? Every other speedster on this list, of course, takes a bit more practice and a tiny bit more skill. Next up, Defender builds. And of course, we have to start with Blastoise, currently the most played defender, I think, in the entire game, next to a few others, but very, very strong with Surf Hydro Pump. I personally like a Muscle Band with Resonant Guard and also a Spoon a lot. Spoon gives you a bit of lasting in early game for Hydro Pump as well and for Water Gun. And then the other items, of course, are excellent. Resonant Guard is already a must-have as well. And then we go for six white and six green emblems. Revenant feels still like such a strong and annoying Pokemon to deal with every single time. Every single time you play against Woodhammer and Horn Leech, you just notice how miserable it is to play against this Pokemon. I currently still like double stacking the most. We go for Attack Bait Cookie and also Resonant Guard. And then, of course, six brown and six white emblems, either with X Speed or in Eject Button. Umbreon is another defender with a lot of different builds that also work quite well. Uh, very, very strong. We can either go Foul Play Snarl, we can go Mean Look Snarl, or we can go Mean Look Wish. All of those work. If you go for Mean Look, I would recommend running XP Share. In general, if you go for Duo or Trio, I would recommend running XP Share. Doesn't matter what build you play when it comes to Umbreon. But when I go for solo queue, I like this double stacking resonant guard build. You can also don't have to go stacking at all. You can also go something like focus band, resonant guard, and maybe even a razor claw. All of those are totally fine items. But the double stacking build feels quite, quite nice in solo queue as you become a very, very strong. And of course, six brown and six white emblems. And for the last defender of this list today, we of course have Slowbro. You can either play Amnesia Surf. Amnesia Skite or Telekinesis Surf, depending on what the enemies have, with a Spoon, Resonant Guard, and Focus Band. You can also play XP, share, and serve one of those items. All of those work. And then six white, six green. We try to be as tanky as possible. And for last, we have a Supporter builds. Currently, Clefable, one of the best Pokemon in the entire game, and the best support with Moonlight and Gravity. We play special specs with Body Barrier or Energy Amplifier, whatever you prefer. One of those two you should be playing, though. I personally prefer Body Barrier. But you can also go for an engine amplifier and of course always XP share with a six green and seven black emblems. Not really a good solo queue Pokemon, but still a great ranked Pokemon, especially if you play duo trio or you just believe in your teammates. You go for Sing and Gleam Wigglytuff, actually quite underrated after the buffs as well. It's very annoying to deal with, has very good laning phase and Resonant Guard with Buddy Barrier and Unite Move gives so much shielding, which makes it a very, very strong teamfight character. And also here we go for a six green and a six white emblem page. You could also maybe for some cooldown reduction, but I think having a bit more HP is more important. Adagoste, of course, also another excellent support. Currently, I think Cotton Spore and Point Puff is the best build for Adagos. And for health items, it's either it's always XP share, and you can either play Muscle Band Rapid Fire Scarf and seven red emblems, or you go for Muscle Band Resonant Guard, also works on this Pokemon, and then you go for some cooldown reduction, seven black and six green emblems. And then, of course, Aedagos is an absolutely excellent support with Point Pop and Cotton Spore, what I currently believe is the best moves and combination as well. And for head items, always XP share. And then we either play Muscle Band, Rapid Fire Scarf with it, or Muscle Band and Resonant Guard. Resonant Guard on Aedagos is also amazing. You can still, of course, play it. You don't have to run out to the Cotton Shield for it. You can just run Resonant Guard because it's a very strong item. And for emblems, if you go for Muscle Band, Rapid Fire Scarf, you can go for seven red emblems. Otherwise, going for seven black things green is always a good choice as well. Can't forget about Blissey either. Still one of the best supports in the entire game. Just a bit behind Clefable when it comes to pure out healing, but still does a lot. It's just missing a bit of AoE healing, but the Unite move has such high impact. And we go for special specs, Buddy Barrier, and of course XP Share with a seven black and six green emblems. I wouldn't really say Mr. Mime is a support, but he's under the support category. But if you go for Barrier Confusion, you're more like an all-rounder attacker with a lot of burst damage. I personally like it a lot. I go for special specs, choice specs, and spoon just to maximize my damage. You can also go for power swap and psychic if you run into a or if you play Duke with another special deck Pokemon. Also quite quite good. And then, of course, we either go for a full six green full damage page for our barrier confusion build, or we go for six green and six white emblems if you go for power swap. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments which build you are going to be used to climb the season. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!